This NBA playoff picks edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is brought to you by Shady Rays. SGPN is teaming up with Shady Rays for Shady May. Get fifty percent off your Shady Rays using promo code SGPN, and then <clears throat> go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Shady for your chance to win five hundred dollars at the end of the month. This is Nate Collins. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Uh, the Knicks are in the second round of a, a, a NBA <laughs> play. This is unreal. What's happening right now? The Giants have a competent front office. Oh wow! Really taking a victory lap that, already? No, no victory lap. I, I just, I mean, again, as a fan of a team that had, I mean, generously, the GM didn't always make the right decision. Although uh, they are going to give some they contracts out to guys. a couple guys. Uh, the bottom line is the digital draft room. They did, people, they did draft franchise quarterback Dan uh, Jones again. They like seeing these magnetic analog draft rooms <laughs> and seeing the Giants draft room and then seeing the Giants falling at the top. A A plus. Oh, value. Warren Sharp's top team with uh, draft CPO, whatever fucking variable he created value. I love to see it. I'm not taking a victory lap though. Cause I don't give a shit about draft grades. Mm. That's not my thing. Well, if you show did, me on the field, if you did care about the draft, okay. of course you are uh, speaking to the uh, internet's number one mock drafter myself. Oh, wow. <laughs> one out of fifth. There were 1529 mock drafts. I uh, came in first place. So you're welcome. America joining us here, not to talk about mock drafts. Although if they want to compliment me, I'll, I'll certainly listen. Uh, we got first up Terrell Furman from the NBA gambling podcast. What's happening Terrell? What's going on? Congratulations. Congratulations on the oh, wow. one of 15 million, trillion, billion, zillion, yeah. billion <laughs> mock drafts. 700 billion so. and a trillion, 300. Billion. How do you, uh, before we bring moon off on quick take on the giants draft, I, it pains me. I thought it was a, a, a decent draft for you guys. Yes, it was a great draft. We hit the, I don't know the last time that I've watched the draft and said, Oh, we needed that position. Oh, we needed that position. Oh, we needed that position. It's normally uh dang, why would we I don't know. I guess it could work out in there somewhere or another, but no, they did very good. They answered by getting a defensive back that hasn't given up more dude, than fifty I mean, yards. Three guys who were like three guys who were legitimately mocked to them all in the first round. I mean, the Eagles kind of yeah. had a similar situation where getting Ringo when he it just that that's, that doesn't happen. It doesn't. The guy doesn't end up making it to their pick. Uh, they they haven't had a Joe Judge wasn't texting with Sean McVay working out deals for fir, <laughs> fourth round picks so they could come out and take I've SEC seen speed. Mock and with and I, all of those guys. <laughs> I've seen mock drafts with all three of those guys going at twenty five, oh. and we got them in twenty five at fifty five. At you know, no, so it, was, it, so was it was a, it was a it was a it was on paper good draft for the Giants as well as as mm. much as it pains me to say it. And but, they didn't draft a, like a kid like a, a employee son. As like a charity case. I like <laughs> I like Deuce Vaughn, but come on, Cowboys. Uh, Just for content. One of the funnier moments I, I don't think is getting talked about is Les Snead uh, when the Rams <laughs> drafted Stetson Bennett said highest quarterback on their board. What? I mean, did they, <laughs> yeah. Where did all their right. board start? Yeah, where did right. their board start? They weren't they weren't thrown off by that arrest <laughs> video. Oh man, F- screw them for killing my Stetson yeah. Bennett not to be drafted almost, CLV, which was amazing. <laughs> almost hit my third rounder at twelve to one. <laughs> oh man. All right, joining us as well from the NBA Gambling Podcast, NFL Podcast, Propcast, Mr. Moonoff Manji. What's happening, Moonoff? Hey, what's going on, guys? It's a great time to be a Houston fan. We got the best quarterback and the best defensive player in the draft. Oh, so wow. hey, it's all we're only looking up from here now. That's great. He's already talking what himself did that into second CJ trade cost. What was it doesn't the cost matter. of that second trade? How do you get how do you, you got you got to swing for the fences sometimes, Terrell? <laughs> it doesn't matter. 
they traded back up to the next pick. Like once that happened, I was like, "Oh, the gloves are off. They're, they're, this is <laughs> full on. We are we are taking advantage of this weak conference this year." Well, it did. Uh, it did sound like for the Texans that the the, the uh, owner wanted the quarterback, the GM wanted the linebacker, so they just settled on getting both. Which maybe right. not maybe not the ideal draft strategy, but again, if the guys are good, it's not going to matter. Again, yeah, Does that we- work in marriage. <laughs> it's do usually we, not that simple. What I usually want, not or... that simple. Yeah, that's well, that's a great a great analogy for marriage, right? Like, is it about the long term or about hitting that one great season? In the, in this situation, <laughs> the G, the owner the, would, the owner would be my wife who got what they wanted at number two, and then I had to yeah. give up everything just to get my <laughs> what I wanted uh, in Will Anderson. That's probably an apt analogy. Uh, it's worth it every time. Worth it every time. Exactly. That's why it was worth it. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's get to the NBA playoffs. Oh, we got a full slate of games. And of course, brought to you by Shady Rays. Oh, oh. look at these shades. Shady Rays, NBA playoffs. Shady Rays, Shady May. That's right. If you have bought your Shady Rays using the promo code SGPN1, you're super smart because you got 50% off if you get more than two pair. And two, you got a chance to win some extra bonus cash. Just take your Shady Rays receipt and go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash shady to enter the Shady May contest. We'll announce the winner at the end of the month. But again, awesome shades, awesome replacement policy, and you get 50% off the shades. Shadyrays.com, promo code SGPN. And then head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash shady. Uh, we had a couple games uh, today. Uh, real quick, any th- any thoughts on that Warriors uh, Kings game? I think when when we originally had you guys on, we were talking about uh, the Warriors Kings. We like Kings to win Game One, Warriors to win the series. Needed an epic performance from Steph Curry. Uh, we'll probably get into it a little bit more. But did you take that uh, that performance by Steph Moon off? Was that like oh awesome? He's he's dominant. He put up fifty points or as a warning sign of like, oh shit, the Warriors needed a 50 point historic game from Steph Curry to knock out the Kings in game seven. Did you take it as a positive or you kind of look at it as a negative that they let the Kings take them to seven? I mean, stars shine the brightest when their lights are the brightest too, right? And I think for Steph Curry, I mean, that was a, a legacy type of performance. I mean, not that he's not one of the best shooters and players we have may have seen in our generation, but I think it's half and half. I think you're also concerned about some of the things that happened with the Warriors in this series, you know, with the turnovers and how bad Jordan Poole played and how bad of a shooting first half for three quarters that Clay Thompson had. So um, I think that for the Warriors, I mean, they needed obviously, well, not every point, but they needed an epic performance from their best player. They got it. They got the job done. But I think we, when we talked about this series, we knew that this was going to be a tough matchup for the Warriors just because of the way the Kings played. I mean, they're, offense kind of went down the hill in the second half, but I think that there's probably more concerns about the warriors after this series, even though Steph had a great performance that they're going to have to look, go, you know, go back to the drawing board against the Lakers. They can't make those mistakes against the Lakers in this series. Yeah. I mean, if, 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 you know, if Kevon Lumini can rebound like that against the Lakers, it's going to be a long series, but I don't know if he's going to have it that easy. Terrell, any, any big takeaways from the round one series or any thoughts on warriors Kings there? Yeah. Uh, the Kings are going to be good in the future. Like, yeah. I think that's a, that's, that's the franchise that's going, that's going places, but the warriors just kind of dialed back and reminded you that, Hey, no matter how crappy of a season we had, and it's definitely, even though we're the sixth seed, we didn't feel good about it, that we're still champions. And Steph took all the words that everybody's been saying over the years of he's not a guy that is a closer for that team. He wasn't really a leader for that team. He was just, you know, somebody that is really, really good at shooting the ball, but they never gave, gave Steph the credit of being how good he was, saying that he was never that closer for them. And 50 points in a closeout game and and get your team out of round one in game seven. Yeah, that's a really, really big on the road, like yeah. on the road at that. And they've how been bad horrible they've on been the road. all season. They did all of this on the road today. So yeah, very, very, very career defining game. Well, it's, what, it's, and, it's what it's what happens when you have NBA lineage in your blood. 
coursing through his veins. Del why, Curry. Why they why he never got recruited oh, Del, Virginia Del, Tech ride. Del Curry. I mean, <laughs> don't even get me started, right? <laughs> Seth Greenberg right there with Justin Fuente. Uh Jake Paquin pointing out 50 point game uh, most ever in a game seven uh, playoff game. That's kind of insane. All right, let's get to the uh, Monday slates. First up, Sixers at Celtics. Celtics lane 10. Total sitting at 213 and a half. Um, series price we'll get into as well. Sixers are massive dogs, plus 350. Celtics minus 450. I'm obviously going to be in on the Sixers. I love them. Game one, get in that 10 points. I think if they do steal a game from Boston in these first two games, it's going to be game one. Now, yes, they are most likely dealing with uh, Joel Embiid's knee sprain who I, do they not have tore it all in the NBA? Like, what am I missing? Inject <laughs> that knee and get the fuck out. Sean, there. He's a big guy. I know he's a big guy. These but, guys have to feel beyond a hundred percent. I'm rocking my I'm rocking my Embiid jersey, but dude, trust the process of the Toradol helping your knee feel good if, and play the game. If he had a sense of humor, he would say, "I feel a hundred percent, but I don't feel like Zion." <laughs> yeah, so I'm sitting out. <laughs> that would be great, but I think he would enrage the fans who. I, <laughs> a knee sprain. It's like I get it. You're not going to be a hundred percent. And I love my boy B-ball Paul, uh, who's who's playing really well. And I think they can uh, sneak out a win in game one uh, with the rest and with Boston. Boston. I don't know. They kind of play down to the Hawks at times. Let them hang around. Uh, Harden, Maxi, Tobias. Uh, they you know they close out the Nets. Obviously the Celtics are a much better opponent, but. I wouldn't be surprised if the Sixers steal one, and then hopefully you get Embiid uh, game three back home in Philly. But I'm definitely going to take them catching ten for game one. Moon off, where are we at? So this this number is too big, even without Embiid. Am I crazy? Yeah, it's a big number. I mean, even without Embiid, I know he averaged I think it was like thirty six or thirty seven points in the regular season against the Boston Celtics, but. Um, Terrell's been a huge fan of Paul Reed, and I think he's going to be big in the in these in the absence of Joel Embiid, uh, whether it's games one and two. Guys like Jimmy Butler and Joel Embiid, they'll birth, they'll they're built from the same cloth. Like if they can be out there, they'll be out there. So for Embiid, I think that he probably knows that if he's effective and he can be out there, he would be out there. But I think that if he's going to hurt the team, especially on the offensive end, I, you know, he's going to be smart and, and and sit it out. But I think 10 is a lot of points. I mean, I'm, I'm going to take the plus 10 here with the 76ers. I expect Paul Reed to have a big game one and two. If Embiid's not there, a uh, Harden was pretty good against the uh, Boston Celtics during the regular season as well. But I think it's really kind of come down to two players that really have to step up in the absence of Embiid. And I think that's Tyreek's maxi and uh, Tobias Harris. So if they're able to get, you know, 20 plus points from both of those guys, um, I think they can keep this one of the number. I do think that they'll split in Boston one, one. Um, and then we'll see if Joel Embiid can come back for game three. So, um, I know we'll talk about the series, but I think this year's, this series price is kind of disrespectful. Sure is moon off. It sure is. Uh, Terrell, <laughs> how, how see you in game one. You of course have had a, well, I don't even think there's a love, but you've, you've definitely been a long time, uh, Boston and uh Celtics hater. Uh, throwing a lot of haterade their way, justifiably so. Very disappointing at times. What do you make of this Celtics ten point spread in Game One? <laughs> I mean, how many times have, have we seen this script? <laughs> how many times have we seen this script written before, where the star is out, the star yeah. doesn't play? We saw it through the whole freaking Clippers series. The star doesn't play that, and everybody writes them off that first game. You don't have a chance. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> You're not going to get this done. And everybody steps up in that first game. Everybody goes out. Like I said, the other time I was on here, it's like the backup quarterback coming in to save yeah. the day the next week. We're going to find a way to cover that spread. Somehow, some way, Philadelphia is going to find a way to cover this spread. It may not have any thoughts of them winning the game. You may, you know, it may not ever feel like they were in danger of winning the game, but the spread is never going to be in doubt. So I think Philadelphia is going to be able to push the pace, go a little bit smaller, run Boston up and down the floor, especially Al Horford, and just challenge them at the rim with speed and quickness rather than the size of Joe Embiid. They pass the ball a lot better when Joe Embiid is not there. They allow Harden to get his, but they also push the pace. I'm, I think that the 76ers, while they're probably not going to win the game, 
They'll definitely keep it within ten. I mean, come on, it's ten's a, ten's a, a ten's ton for a playoff team. Who you, what, uh, what happened this much in, rest. It happened in Game Five as well, right? Like in the first round against but Atlanta, they didn't have Dejounte Murray, and everybody's like, "Oh, they don't have Dejounte Murray," and and lo and behold, Atlanta goes in in a situation with their backs against the wall without their second best player, and they went in and got the road victory. So I think it's somewhat of a similar situation. Yeah. Kramer, what's your take on this uh, Celtics? Sixers? Well, I, I think if this was if they if both coaches were honorable, we would do this like the the uh, the, the old days, like uh, the Greeks and shit, where the two the, they just send a hero out, but instead of a hero, it would be the two head coaches. Really enjoyed getting into the the psyche of this uh, Missoula cat. He's a real psychopath. Hmm. I do like that. He's perfect for Boston. Fun fact: went to the same high school as former. Uh, Former uh, Blue Wire coworker and friend of the program, Will Blackman. Oh, okay. Bishop Henry up there in Rhode Island. So, co- uh, also the same high school's cousin Mush. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know, Sean. I I know you're. I know you're going to find a way to talk yourself into this. And I and I listen to what Terrell seems to rinse and repeat uh, over and over again. <laughs> but are we not like when when? So at at what point? I haven't heard you guys talk about Doc at all. When when do we when does that factor game in? Seven. That, game seven. It, game so seven. it doesn't matter. It's it's not it's an early Doc season. revenge <laughs> series. It's the revenge <laughs> series, right? Our as a fan of the Sixers, yes. Uh, and I'm this is specifically a question for NBA Sean. As a fan of the Sixers, where are you at uh, in terms of one to ten? Uh, you're feeling confident <laughs> about beating the city of Boston as Boston slowly slides into a. Demise there, that started when they sold their soul well, to beat we the just, Yankees. We just watched the uh, game seven, a complete collapse against the Florida that was, Panthers. That was beautiful. It was, and will I, this be part of the the event? Yeah, I, it, in in some ways, it I happens like, in three, Sean. I like this for the Sixers. The the narrative is set up. All the expectations are completely thrown out the window. The Sixers have struggled with Doc and just with this run with Joel Embiid when they have all the expectations. Now Embiid's kind of out. The pressure is off them. This is when this team can really shine. And I'm in. yes, Give I'm, the points. I'm, I'm worried about uh, <laughs> doc overall for the series. Well, but what if we don't get to a game seven? Yeah. I mean, Sixers could win in six. I, I like where your head's at. Ryan. The Celtics coach, <laughs> the Celtics coach is a real psychopath. <laughs> Sixers to win. He in walked s- out to the opponent's <laughs> three point line to call a timeout. I, I'm like, serious. Oh, he is intense. You know how intense. many, how far you have to go to get to the opponent's three point line to call a timeout. You went the entire length of the court, sir. He just, he has the eyes of a, he's, he has the eyes of a man who would just absolutely Fuck you. There's up. no way James Harden and uh, Doc Rivers blow uh, a big playoff series. No, I, but like, well, James they, Harden went to recharge his batteries in Vegas. I don't know if you caught that video or not, where he kind of slapped one of his guys from his entourage. <laughs> but uh, you know, he went to Vegas. He runs a tight well, ship in Vegas. Yeah, so you know, he went to the strip clubs. He's got his batteries charged. You know, he's going to be without Joel Embiid, so he's ready to go. He may, have, he may have discharged his batteries. Is, is the data uh, one of the, one does of the, the Vegas? Does, does yeah, the, he, he got to Munoz's point. He did use some of the time to rest and recuperate by do, going to Vegas, uh, getting into altercation with one of his, uh, you know, guys chilling with him, and then uh, they. But he, he he made it back to practice. He's all good. We had a deep dive at some point. I thought the strip clubs were bad for him. Not good. No, I think it Reach, was, recharge in a bad way, maybe. Yeah, I, I forget. We we got to go back to that Reddit. It post was like where, tacos and LeBron. <laughs> not also not good. Taco Tuesday that, was not was Tuesday. that good for LeBron. <laughs> I'm taking the Sixers. I think the series price at plus three fifty is incredibly disrespectful for a team that's been really good uh, so far this season. I'm projecting that Embiid will be there from Game Three on, uh, which knock on wood, we'll see if it happens. And I actually don't think even as a a Sixers fan, I wouldn't even bet like Sixers four two at eight at plus eight fifty, Sixers to win in seven at plus nine fifty. I, I like I don't. I would rather just take the series at plus three fifty. I think you're going to get some value. And again, if they just steal one of those first two games, this price is going to completely change. So even if you're a a neutral party just looking to get the best number, I think um, Sixers plus three fifty is is lock it up. Or if you, uh, I'll also give out Sixers plus two and a half games at mm. minus two or minus one twenty. I d- if they only win one game in this series, you have to fire Doc Rivers, which 
again, I I feel like I'm getting to the point where like Justin Decker is where if they lose in bad fashion, you're excited because they're going to fire the coach. But then I don't want it to be like the Chargers where they didn't end up firing the coach and they lost in horrific fashion. Uh, Moon off. We'll let you start on the series. <laughs> what are you doing to bet this series? Over five and a half games uh, is interesting. There's a lot of different ways you can get down on this. How say you? Yeah, if you want to save a couple cents, you could go with the over five and a half oh, at around it. even money. Yeah, I, I love the plus two and a half. I, I Celtics are not winning the series in five games. Um, if not, we'll have Scott Foster or Tony Brothers go out there to extend <laughs> the series a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they need but, some ratings. Yeah, plus, and I think all four of these uh, conference semifinals have the capabilities or the ability to go to seven games. But plus two and a half at minus one twenty. I mean, I, I think that'll split. Games uh, one and two, and then you hopefully you get Joel Embiid back, and then you know Terrell's talked about this a lot that when they're in situations, the Boston will choke it away somewhere. So plus two and a half, minus one twenty, I love that, and I'll take the over five and a half games at even money as well. I, I do wonder if maybe the so if Bo, let let's just say let's just uh, workshop this. Let's say Boston wins the first two because Embiid doesn't play. Yeah, but but Philly covers both of them. Okay. Uh, you know, just throwing that in in there for you. Small wins. Then the price goes up for the series price, even though Boston did what they were supposed to do. So probably a little bit, but not not crazy. So why wouldn't you make your investment like Moonoff said on the over five and a half, which I just I just threw in a max play on over five and a half games. <laughs> I, I saw it. I'm very delighted with how much I have in my balance based on the generals. The USFL generals. Max play on the spread and the money line. Just <laughs> easy fucking money. Uh, although the Birmingham uh, that was a, that was a tough loss. But I, why not do that and then buy your Sixers after they go down 0 2? Yeah, because I think they're part of me thinking they're going to win the series is thinking they're going to steal one of these games right. at home. They catch Boston asleep at the wheel with no Embiid. Catch that psychopath. I, I, <laughs> I, honestly, I'm doing a deep dive on Missoula. I'm going to be contacting like Cousin it. Mush. I like it. Maybe, we'll, be, maybe you can get us some background info. Terrell, how say you? I, I think the over five and a half games, like, there's no way the NBA lets this. These two TV markets only get to five games, right? Oh no, five and a half is a lock. It's going to go over five and a half. And the plus two and a half is by far a lock. There's no way they <laughs> right. I they mean, just I'm fold, crazy. they went to six with the Hawks. Like, come on, they are going to fold away one of these games. And Joel Embiid is Joel Embiid. When he comes back on the court, he's going to give Boston everything, and we know that because he has a fifty point game against them this season. So. I expect Joel B to fully be out there when he's out there. Yeah. So here's how here's how I'm willing to play it. Now Boston can entirely screw me over with this, and I would not be surprised. But this is how I'm gonna play it. Boston to win game one, okay. 76ers to win the series, plus 650. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Oh my god. True. You got you got my attention. Yeah, I mean, I don't hate it. The only thing that screws this <laughs> is if they don't show up to game one. The only thing. <laughs> See, well, that that's where I think they might catch them sleeping. Is game one, everyone talking oh and beads out, blah blah blah. You get the Sixers coming off that long rest, and and they they give them everything they got, catch them off guard. I that that's what would worry me betting that Sean six seventy sixers to win game one and to win the series is nine to one. Yeah. Now we're talking. Now <laughs> yeah, we're that's, talking. That's, that's worth it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, because then you can essentially at nine to one, well you cause sixers to win in six is eight fifty. Sixers to win in seven is nine fifty. So or or six yeah, so that's that's probably a better way to play that if you think they're gonna 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 get it done, but I'll I'll just keep it I'll keep it at plus two fifty minus one twenty Sixers for the series, Ryan. I got you down for over five and a half games. Oh, Any, play. Anything else you want to toss uh, in? I mean, I I get no. I'm 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 gonna consider betting the Sixers after they lose the first two games. Okay, I like it. Moving over to the uh, late game Monday night, Suns at the Nuggets. Uh, Denver leads the series 1 0. Nuggets laying four and a half. Total is 227. Nuggets series price is minus 170. Um, Suns, a plus 140 dog here. Uh, this to me feels like a, a nice bounce back opportunity for this Suns team, especially the fact that they're catching uh, four and a half points. 
I mean, they've been obviously really good with Durant. I I thought they had a chance to lose the Clippers. Clippers, of course, shocked them in Phoenix, win game one. Then Kawhi sprains his knee, never sees the court again, uh, and they can't get anything done. But I, it, when you're playing a high elevation team like the Nuggets, of course, that first game is usually pretty tough. I felt like Nuggets had a chip on their shoulder for that game. This is a nice bounce back spot for the Suns, especially catching four and a half. But uh, Terrell, what's your thought on Suns Nuggets? Do they, wh- where are you laying in here? I mean, it's basically going how I expected. I'm already have a bet of the Nuggets to win these game one and the Suns to win the series at plus two fifty five, mm-hmm. and they had they had everything to gain by trying to start out really really strong the Nuggets. And the fact of last time we played this team in a playoff series, we got swept. The revenge factor of that, making sure that, hey, at the very least, we're not getting swept this time. Now we can just start focusing and playing basketball more and living in the moment. I, I think that it's a gradual overestimate, uh, not overestimation, but overreaction behind game one and how the Suns lost. They're going to make the adjustments. I think this is zigzag theory. I'm all over the Suns here. Yeah, this it just felt like textbook zigzag. Um, but uh, maybe I'm missing something here on the matchup stuff. Moon off. What's your take nuggets, uh, nuggets, cruise or Suns hang around here. I think the adjustment for the Suns is going to have to be either. They're going to have to shoot some more three point shots or they're going to have to defend the three point shot. One of the two, because if you kind of look at the box score in game one, I think that was pretty much the difference uh, for the, uh, for game one, I think the nuggets made more three point shots and the Phoenix suns attempted in the game. So I think that if, again, I think Monty Williams and the suns will make those adjustments. Um, and I think that this is a great bounce back spot, right? Um, the guys or the big three didn't really play a lot of minutes because it did turn into a blowout. Um, but I, I think that I, I think they do bounce back here. I think they cover the number. I think they get the outright win. expect a get big game from Kevin Durant. He had great games against the Denver Nuggets after the trade from Brooklyn to Phoenix. He's just a matchup nightmare for the uh, for the Denver Nuggets. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if the Durant goes out for a 35-40 piece in this game. I think I, I do expect the Nugget, sorry, the Suns to uh, win the game, if not at least cover this number. So I'm all over the Suns as well. Kevin Durant to lead the game in point, or is this series? Kevin Durant to lead the series in points plus 140. Oh, all right. And what's Ooh, it at? Nice. Uh, what's he? What did he do? Game one. Twenty nine. Okay. He had yeah, twenty five. Uh, I think it was twenty four, twenty five by Booker half, is, and then that Booker. whole team really gassed out in that second half. I'm See, not sure if that had yeah, to do with I, the I, elevation. I, I, yeah, it probably had something to do with the fact that they can't get anything from their bench, and that's really what's going to be, you know, the issue for them this series is that because. Just like last series, the bench unit didn't provide much, and they had to continuously play to starters, play to starters, play to starters. Kevin Durant is at what big age now, and he's playing forty five minutes in a playoff series. So, uh, I end up coming off an Achilles injury and stuff like yeah. that. Like, so yeah, I think that's really going to be their biggest thing, and that's going to be on Monty Williams. Probably need to insert Tori and Craig back into the starting lineup, let a Kogi come off the bench, and just big some type of rotation change whether it's more campaign minutes whether it's more Terrence Ross minutes whether it's more TJ Warren minutes like somebody's got to be able to come off the bench and provide a spark for this team because if Bruce Brown is doing what he does for Denver then they're not going to match him off the bench at all yeah campaign needs to play more minutes especially in the in the uh in the elevation like that game one the, the bench really got exposed Kramer what are you doing game one so, so you're, you're going to, this is consensus business trip output from the Suns. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I think, what do you mean? That first one, yeah, maybe they smoke some weed after game one, you know, relax were, a little bit. Yeah. They didn't even play the starters. They even play the whole game. They, they know they just needed to get that second one. Okay. They let Denver puff out their chest. I think Denver probably felt a little disrespected, but I don't know. I, I'm. All right. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm heard, pulling you into the sun. I'm hearing the sharps are saying the zigzag <laughs> is dead, so it makes me want to lean into it harder. <laughs> Give me the sun. And I do like you threw out Kevin Durant to lead this the uh, series in points. I'll just take the Suns at plus money, plus one forty. Same price. Yeah, uh, and again, I think there's fewer ways you get screwed uh, if you if you just take Suns because there's maybe a world where Booker really uh, carries them. 
Um, but again, I I, I I thought the Suns were gonna win the champion. I I I, no, I, Suns I read the script earlier in the season, and maybe Suns, there's been Suns, some revisions. Suns had crazy low odds um, to win the championship, so that's why I'm surprised it's uh, only plus one or that it, that you're getting plus odds at plus one forty for a series where they were expected to lose here in, in Denver in Game One. I don't think that's shocking. Uh, all they have to do really is steal, steal one and defend home court. I mean, hey. it, it's. NBA 101. I think getting the Suns at a plus price right now uh, will look pretty good in hindsight. Terrell, what are you looking at the series? Oh, uh, well, well, you already know I'm sitting on a Suns. Yeah, he has a ticket. Yes. ticket. Yeah. So uh, I'm still. I I just am under the fact I am very interested to see if Denver's bench can continue to be consistent because in that last series they took some nights off. And the nights that they took off was the times that Minnesota was most dangerous. If they if their bench takes a night off and I'm just leaning on starters on both sides, I'm going with Kevin Durant and Devin Booker every day of the week. Mm, like makes sense to that, me. that's the duo that I'm taking every day of the week. So uh it, it's really gonna be on Denver's bench if they extend this series and make this a long series. But ultimately, as much as I don't like Phoenix's bench. I think Denver has some inconsistencies as well. So I think Phoenix is going to get this done sooner rather than later. They just need that time to adjust. Can Denver win a game in the Valley? Like that's going to be the question. If this goes one, one, can Denver win one of those two games and not go down three, one. Well, and then obviously the the guys are at home and your, your bench obviously always plays better at home. So it would be tougher to expose that weakness uh, for the Suns. moon off. How say you series? What are you doing here? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with the Suns as well. Um, I I need to get more out of DeAndre Eight, man. He just hasn't been able to show up. I, and it's not really like scoring points. I just need him to, you know, rebound the basketball and really take away the second chance opportunities for the Denver Nuggets because he was in single digit rebounds in game one where Kevin Durant, I think, led the team in rebounds. So if he's able to block some shots and really control the glass for the Phoenix Suns, I think they have a great chance of number one evening evening up the series in game two and going on to win it. So I'm with Terrell. I'm, I'm going to put my money on Devin Booker and and Kevin Durant um, to win this series as well in advance of the Western Conference Finals. Suns in five is eleven to one. Ooh, could they could they roll? They did it last. They did it last last round. Last round they lost right. the first game. Put off me straight. down for uh, let's wheel it. Suns everything game <laughs> spread money line series. We, we need so, that LeBron and Kevin Durant matchup somewhere somehow. Uh, so it's going to uh, be the Western on. Conference Finals. Come on, <laughs> you, they would never. The NBA would never get make sure their superstars match up in the NBA playoffs. Right? Well, you yeah. got Kevin Durant, LeBron James. Son of LeBron, I mean, you're you're or son of Michael Jordan. Son you're working, Jordan. you're working well towards MJ a, Junior. Uh, a full movie cast of uh, yeah, give me right, but the Suns in in, in five. Let's do Suns in five. That's fun. The 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 chat is saying uh, Brando saying Suns about to get rolled. They have oh, no bench. What? Um, that seems to be uh, the consensus. Dougie buckets checking in. Katie Booker can combine for seventy, and Phoenix can still lose. That that's a decent point. Uh, I guess to me, even though the Nuggets are up one zero, it feels closer to a toss up than plus one forty. So that that's kind of my handicap. All right, fair enough. But I'm also going to sprinkle this uh, this Suns, Suns in five. In five. Yeah. All right. All right. Moving over. I to mean, this. yeah. What do you? What else? Anything you got for that? Before we move no, on? No, to I just no, no. I just Denver over the course of the playoffs bench has done about the same thing as the Suns, And I think Bruce Brown was really the big thing that's changed that. And the fact that if he's on, then it's a, it's something completely different, but well, and also to your best 14 guy. points per game in that last series for the Suns bench, 20 points per game in that last series for the nuggets. And it, your best guy, Jokic, like we got to see some defense out of him before I can really like, you know, uh, I think he's a liability in the playoffs where defense really matters. And am I being too hard on him, Moon off? Like, I think his no. When your best if player he, is that bad at defense, it's gonna impact you. Yeah, I, I think that if if they're able to get him into the pick and roll, um, and he said it himself, he's not a he, he said himself, I'm not a very good pick and roll defender. <laughs> uh, so I, I expect, you know, 
uh, whether it's Chris Paul or whether it's Devin Booker, you know, switching off and getting those pick ro- pick and rolls and trying to get Jokic to defend either Kevin Durant or or Chris Paul or Devin Booker, whoever's running the pick and roll. I think that's where they really have to expose them. So yeah, I mean, you're not wrong about that. The chat is all in on the Nuggets, so right. they're gonna they're gonna take a lap, wow. a victory lap if uh, if they end up pulling this. Well, off. chat's never been wrong. Chat Faith remains. Chat remains undefeated. Hey, uh, before we get to the Tuesday game, shout out to Underdog Fantasy. That's right, Underdog Fantasy. Best Ball Mania Four is here, Ryan. I know you're excited. I'm excited. They're giving away fifteen million dollars in prizes, which is insane. Again, if you've never done best ball, it's really easy. You draft your team, and that's all you do. You don't have to set your lineups. You don't have to worry about anything else. And you, you got a chance to win fifteen million dollars in prizes. That's insane. Head over to underdogfantasy.com. Use promo code SGPN. 100% deposit match up to $100. It's underdogfantasy.com. Promo code SGPN. So, again, if you deposit $100, you get a $100 bonus. That's like free shot, four free shots at winning uh, a, a piece of the four, $15 million in prizes. And uh, NBA, they got plenty of uh, like daily games, player prop parlays. If your state doesn't have legal uh, sports gambling, this uh, they're active in a ton of of state. So highly recommend underdogfancy.com promo code SGPN and it's Derby week. Uh, Kentucky Derby is coming up. Uh, so make sure you check out the notorious OTB off track betting uh, drop, uh, drop a notorious OTB, a review. Uh, they're giving out a, uh, the wolf is giving out a fallen Bob painting. It's a pretty oh. cool. It's a pretty cool uh, horse racing uh, painting. So check that out. And uh, Derby picks coming up later in the week. Oh hell yeah! Horse ponies this week, Sean. Let's go. I know we don't normally do book reviews, but I just finished uh, the greatest gambling story ever told. It's a uh, book about these, uh, these. By you finishing it, did you actually read it, or is this like yes. an audio book? No, it's okay. I, I got a Kindle. <laughs> Got a Kindle, no audio. Well, book. people t- nowadays will say, "I read a you book." You have a Kindle? Yes. Oh, is that Come an old on. person? Really? Thing? Who oh, doesn't have a Kindle? It's, old school. It's great get for my paperback. eyes. Great, great just for my get, eyes. Well, no, but like, why don't you just have an iPad and just put the book on the? Oh, hold you, on. You, you hold have on. a Jesus you have Christ. a tablet that's literally only for books. Hold yes. On. Hold on. Let me let me first of all, Moon off. I was with you until I wasn't with you. <laughs> Uh, so it's, it's a very different experience, and Terrell, I'm very concerned about your eyes. If that's what you're doing, we gotta, we gotta, we, maybe we need to have a. You don't need. I I normally have to use reading glasses, oh, and you wow. got a light. This thing is great. They're it's pretty easy soft. on your eyes. They're tiny. They're light. They the Highly battery li- like you don't need the frills. The battery lasts forever. Trust me, Terrell. I, I well, why would once... I have an additional device? Like if I already have an iPad, why do I need a Kindle too? I can just put books on the iPad. That's what's uh, just like. Why do I need an an additional device for I, just I, reading. I hear you. No, you could. You, there's, there's a, a Kindle also has like yeah, you games can do stuff and like it. internet uh, capabilities. But, but well. I don't remember. I don't recommend that. It's, it's just for reading books. I think is the best for it. It's black and white. Yeah. It's, uh, it doesn't kick off that blue light, so you can read it and you go to bed. You yeah. don't. Doesn't mess up your sleep cycle. I mean, when you have money to make, like <laughs> SGP does. Yeah, that's obviously oh, here, here, what it is. Like, uh, I just, we're not, we're not. I just paid can't see myself buying a whole I'm another getting. device for just that. Like that is. In, you should. Like, I, I get, never, I never agreed with Kindles because we always had uh, tablets. So it's this, like, this why not just get a tablet? Hey, no, 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 no. Terrell. I'm I'm seeing the hesitancy. I was a I was a Kindle <laughs> hater as well. I thought it was stupid. I got one. Bro, he's gonna send you one as as a yes. early birthday like, Christmas present. No, but seriously, I, I still will... do like analog. But I yeah, I I will say that it is it's better than you would expect. Oh uh, man, Mike Rob in the chat says, "Damn, age comes at you fast, huh?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one day you find yourself <laughs> sitting in bed. Re- <laughs> The story, which was the highlight of why I was talking, it's awesome. It's about these a couple D gens uh, who place a long shot bet. He just puts his reading glasses on in the bed. No, that's great. Gl- that's that's what's awesome about the Kindle, Ter- uh, Terrell. You don't need the reading glasses. I feel like Terrell needs to just observe a day in the office and see Sean with the glasses on. I do. Bit. I normally, if I'm looking at a computer all day, I do need the glasses. Do you, do you turn the lamp on to the side, or do you just oh. use the light from the screen? The, He's got oh, a nightlight. No, I, a reading I, book I, night I did have a reading oh. book light. I threw it out oh. because you don't you need, don't it need with it. The Kindle. Sean's having a get off my mind. <laughs> right I'm now. doing 
I'm doing a fucking ad for the Kindle. Right, they seriously. don't deserve it. Right, come on, Bezos greatest, hasn't done shit greatest for us. gambling story ever told. Uh, it's about these guys. They p- place a crazy bet on the horse to win the Kentucky Derby down at this uh, mm. Tijuana sports book. It's, it's a great story. Highly recommend it. SGPM book club coming soon. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Jake uh, in the chat says, "Do you, do you not Gambling need a grill to cook to cook to cook for steak if you got a stove?" Yeah, it's it, it's kind of something like that. It's a great comparison. Wow, I, look at Jake coming in hot. Appreciate it. It's got my back. <laughs> moving over, moving over to the Heat Knicks. Knicks laying six and a half at home against the Heat. Uh, total sits at two oh eight. Uh, I was on a uh, sports grid or Visa in one of those places that gave oh, out wow, look at that. <laughs> whatever. Oh, wow. I can't even yeah, I can't remember. Jesus. <laughs> this is what happens when you become a mod guru. You can't too catch all the networks. You're I mean, on now. I, I'm hey, a I've been on star. sports grid and Visa too. Yeah. I, I appreciate the bit, right? That was perfect. Sean. I assume that was intentional. <laughs> oh, yeah. you got, we got two angry guys on the other, <laughs> the other side of the horn and you just, just, just out want. media, media appearances. Oh, no, all, you my, know. all the shows I call into, they all run together, but I I said I love the Knicks at the series price because wow. how could you make or sorry I loved uh, Heat at the series how could you make the Heat a dog with Jimmy Butler with the way they're playing yep. like New York didn't deserve to be a minus one sixty five favorite to start the series however yep. now that Butler rolled his ankle this is an awesome bounce back spot for the Knicks Bing Bong guy is going to be going nuts this is a great time for the Bing Knicks to, <laughs> the Knicks to bounce back. Oh, classic I, bounce back spot. It, it maybe it's a hair high at six and a half. I Who think cares? they're probably splitting the difference of whether or not Butler plays. If he does, how 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 healthy is he? I think if he's officially out, it, it maybe goes up a point, maybe point and a half. But I I I actually love the Knicks for game two. Kramer, I'm assuming you're on the Knicks. Oh, it's I mean, again, how many times? Last time we talked, it was a lot of like, oh yeah, we've seen this situation before, Sean. Yeah. And and I think with with the exception of maybe one, it it's just the NBA. It, of course the Knicks are gonna bounce back here. No, it really it really feels Jimmy like- Butler, he used his super, he <laughs> uses listen, Michael Jordan always dominated the Knicks in the guard. No, he, he always was a hand. If he handed anything down to, to his son, it would be to the shine in the garden. Dominating in the garden. Well, in a rivalry against the Knicks, I mean, it's too perfect. Really, uh, again, why are no, why are less people questioning this? I know there's videos with millions of views out there about this, <laughs> but why? Like, how can the mainstream? I don't know if anyone is. That's, we got to do like a live. I mean, this is the like, uh, this is the decision 2.0. Just like, a bro. live paternity test be, reveal of Michael Jordan. It's fucking twenty twenty. Jimmy Butler. It would 20, be it would be epic if you got to find out that that was actually um, Jordan's son. It's twenty twenty three, dude. Like we'll 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 embrace you. Yeah, yeah I we'll support you. <laughs> Moon off. How say you? Game two here of this series. Yeah, I think you with a nail on the head that depends on if Jimmy Butler's going to play in this game or not. It's kind of in that range that, Hey, he might not play because they got the, they got the split at least for, you know, uh, the games one and two in New York, you send them back to Miami, let them get a, a week of treatment on the ankle and they get them ready yes. for game three, on, which is not until Saturday. Right. I can't trust the Knicks full game. I think if you're going to play this play on first quarter or first half, oh, that's it, it happened angle. again today. Yeah, I mean, they it happened again today. They had the lead at the half, and then again, they they lost they lost the lead in the second half. So I think Knicks do bounce back. Um, gun to my head, I would go full game, but I think my more confident bet would be either first quarter or first half for the Knicks in game two. See, that's why you tune into the NBA Gambling Podcast. You get those sharp sharp angles from Moon off Terrell. I, I assume Reichel, he. I Delante. assume he doesn't play. Why would you play him? Um. Yeah, no. You I say this consistently. It was an they ankle their roll. I, I don't know how bad it sprained. I guess we'll we'll find that out in the next basketball. It's the most important thing next to their hands. Like literally the most important <laughs> joint after their hands d- is their ankle. It depends how bad the ankle roll is because I I was walking over to the studio and uh, oh no I was oh I, had my, I had my phone out and really Uh-oh. it's really it should be a state uh, a, a criminal actions against the city oh, no. of Los Angeles the tree roots just uproot the sidewalk. <laughs> oh wow! Oh man, I was I 
I I ate it pretty hard on the this sidewalk. This is the ultimate old man thing <laughs> to get pissed off at the sidewalk <laughs> and, and talk to the city. I, fe- I fell down. I First hit. it was a book. Now it's an ankle sprain on the sidewalk. I, here's how hard I fell. I fell down and the earbud popped out of my. <laughs> oh, you ear. said your hip popped out? <laughs> no, the earbud. I was listening to a podcast and my uh, my well, earbud. I think his ear aid popped out. I was like. <laughs> No, I'm not there yet. But my <laughs> my AirPod popped out of my head when I hit the ground. The oh, phone went everywhere. I will then there, the 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 AirPods case uh, also flew out and it was mm. underneath some guy's truck. So oh, I was like fishing horrible. it out. That's the worst. So it was a rough. Why do those over things here. bounce so well? I don't know. They no, really they are designed to be dropped. And hey, to- we're not on screen. <laughs> Oh what? Oh Ryan never fixed. Uh, he never came back from the. Uh, no, that's not true. <laughs> I, you might you might have been on screen for some of that time. Um. All right. Where are we at? Uh, we're at Moon well, off. We're, st- we're not on. S- that's what they're saying. They're saying we're not on. S- oh, there we are. Hey. Well, hey no, I, the chat. Game was, two. Nick's. The favorite thing for the chat to do weird. is to fuck with the people on the show. Remember, always remember that. Terrell, how say you? Game two, Heat Knicks, and feel free to talk. Uh, Anything you've already given out series wise as well. Yeah. So, I mean, as soon as they said that Julius Randle was out, it just brought back wonderful flashback memories. I want to take us down a trip down memory road to this time <laughs> last year. Actually, it was the, seri- the round before this. And Luka Doncic had just, I don't remember what he did. He did something. I think it was a sprained ankle, too, actually. But Luka Doncic was hurt. He was not starting the series, and Jalen Brunson had to be the guy and carry them through one, I think it was actually two games, two, against Utah. So what did we do in that series? After they lost game one, they got a live, they had a live number of five to one to win the series, and we bet them five to one to win the series, and they did because Jalen Brunson is a dog. We did the same thing today. Heat win game one. Knicks win the series plus okay, 475. Right. Jesus. We've got Ooh. game one. Now we expect to see a different team when Julius Randle comes back. He is going to be that. They need his production. They need to be able to shoot the ball a lot better from three because they were shooting the ball well today from the field, but it just got so bad from three that it kind of tucked everything down. But they were fi- over 50% for a good portion of the game from the field. It was just the fact that they couldn't hit anything on the outside. And the Miami Heat over here hitting 13 threes in the game for 33%. So this is I think mo- that yeah, this is, over this the time is of this series that they're going to find their outside shot. They're going to ar- dominate inside the paint as they've done today. And when Julius Randle comes back, it's going to be a whole completely different team and a whole completely different series. And we'll see if the Heat can keep up the offense and what they got today from Kyle Lowry. So you're also on the Knicks. Would you get down uh, more on the Knicks at plus one thirty if you were just hopping in now? If you had missed out, if you hadn't been subscribed to the NBA Gambling Podcast, if you made that mistake not to do that, missed out on some value, would you still yeah. hop in at the Knicks at plus one thirty? I would. I would. I think the Knicks split this series at home. I think that it can go either way. They might split back. I think they do get a win in Miami, but uh, when Julius Randle comes back and his effectiveness, it's going to be a lot because they really don't have an answer to guard him. And when he when he's on, he's on. And if he takes away from Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Butler has to use up energy trying to slow down Julius Randle on the defensive end. And that make that evens the playing field a lot better, especially with Jalen Brunson in town now. Plus, my, he, Miami fans are fucking soft. <laughs> so they're just fucking soft. That was a real deep. And you asked Terrell if he wasn't Terrell, would he still bet on the Knicks? And he <laughs> said, "Yeah, fuck yeah, I would." Nick Fortune wants to know: Would you recommend Julius Randle points next game? Are you you assuming he comes back in a big way, Terrell? Yes, I do. I think I would actually take his points in the next game. I we've seen him be able to do it before. Like he's given them really good games before, and I think that it's going to be when I saw it to. When I saw it today, it was at 19 and a half, and I was ready to hammer it today when I thought he was playing. And then as I saw he was out re- like right after they posted that 19 and a half. But if they give you a very conservative number like that for Julius Randle, I think he definitely can get 20 points on Miami Heat. Moonoff, how say you? Uh, Julius Randle points, thoughts for the series. What are you doing? Uh, I actually do like Miami for the series. I've been Miami before the series started. Um, as for Julius Randle, I think for me, I would want to see how he looks in game two because he is also coming off of the ankle. 
and also uh, the conditioning, right? I know he's missed a couple games here. Um, so I think for me, again, if, if the numbers, right, like if you're getting a 18 and a half or 19 and a half, I would look towards the over, uh, anything above 20 and a half, 21 and a half, I would probably wait and, you know, wait and see and to see how he looks or maybe get a live number. If he gets off to a slow start, you know, he's trying to get his feedback under him. Your book offers those live props. I think that's a good time to jump in as well. Sean, imagine a guy missing a week in the playoffs and coming back and us discussing his making sure he's in shape. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, objectively you, funny. You, uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, you might I, not I'm hundred. I'm hundred percent, but I don't feel like Zion, so I'm sitting out. <laughs> you feel like Kramer, so you're you're sticking with uh, Miami on the series. I, I'm with you. I I'm also on Miami for the series. What the fuck is wrong not, with you? I'm guys. not doubling down here at minus one fifty five, but I do like them. Kramer, what what do you mean? What's wrong with me? Nothing. Taking Miami. Yeah, Jimmy uh, Butler. I know you were guy. Air Jordan. I don't know you were guy. Let's I, go. Wait, wait, come on, the playing teams they don't do I, shit. No, no. Well, I I think we're learning. It. I mean, Atlanta got mm. two against Boston. Mm. Miami won that series. They 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 punked uh, the yeah. the Milwaukee. They Bucks. got to their. They reached their ceiling. But that, I don't think they've. I don't think they're foot off the gas. If they <sighs> if they're playing someone besides the Knicks, you're getting emotional. No, I'm not emotional at emotional. all. Get, yeah, get, I don't. I don't me, really. I don't news. really care about this Miami team. I uh, I think they're a fun. Like Butler's uh, a fun watch, but I I don't know. And I think they're they're well. Coached. A guy from Philly would never align with a bunch of guys from Miami. It's just a different <laughs> culture down there. I don't know. NBA Sean. I, I need my slick NBA back Sean's hair. Getting Pat loose. Riley-esque. NBA Sean's getting loose. He went on vacation. Loves Miami. <laughs> Did a little blow. You know. <laughs> All right, it's from the cocaine bear. All right, game one on Tuesday, Lakers Warriors. Oh man, I was going back and forth on this one because um, I could see I could see the Warriors coming out flat after they had to empty the tank for that game seven, but I could also just see the Lakers, you know, losing game one like they did against uh, Memphis and not really showing up in. Uh, in San Francisco, there. I'll let, I'll, I'll defer to the experts here. Moon off. Go first. What do you got, Lakers Warriors? And then we'll get to the series later. But first, Game One. What are we doing here? Yeah, I'm taking the points with the Lakers in Game One. Um, game, you get your the Warriors are coming off. It's a it's a it's a short turnaround, right? We saw Game yeah. Seven today. Immediately, Game One is on Tuesday night. Um, obviously, the advantage or the rest advantage is with the Lakers. It's a different team you're going up against in the Lakers. They're a very good defensive team since the trades uh, they made at the trade deadline. We saw that on full display, especially in the closeout game for the Lakers. Um, now you're going up against LeBron James, Anthony Davis. Um, the thing I like about the Lakers is that I don't think it's talked about enough is that people just thought that it's all Anthony Davis and LeBron James, but in that series against the Memphis Grizzlies, they had a different leading score in every single one of the games that they won. So the it's depth has set, been really yeah. stepping up for this team. So at least for game one, I'm going to take the points here. I think that you're right. I think the Warriors do come out a little flat. Um, and I think Lakers take advantage of steel game one, like they did against the Memphis Grizzlies in their first round series. Awesome. It's, it's genius. What? I mean, what, 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 I mean, think about the narratives we're dealing with right now. What could LeBron do, overcome golden mm. state to Me? then face Kevin Durant? <laughs> it's like a fucking Royal rumble. Yeah, I mean they're coming out right in order. <laughs> LeBron's kids about to come into the league. I mean, this is just Austin. you can't make this shit. Up. How are the Lakers good? How are the Lakers? How are we talking about the Lakers? D'Angelo Man, Russell's playing what the well. What is happening? Uh, People yeah. in LA like checked out on the Lakers halfway <laughs> yeah. through the season. There were no Lakers flags driving around. They None. didn't even they didn't even get excited about the team. Uh, which is crazy because you look at their futures odds. Yeah, they're they're like right up in there. Um, you know, as far as like one of the favorites in the West, it's pretty interesting how things are shaking out. I mean, I you mentioned uh, one player from or a different player in each of one of their wins. Uh, one of them was Austin Reeves. I was laughing my ass off when Austin Reeves did that move where he was driving down <laughs> and he faked out Dylan Brooks. It was just like, oh man, Dylan Brooks, uh, tough series for him. Saying I don't respect guys until they put up forty on me, and then of course losing uh, the last game by forty points. Uh, Terrell, what are you doing here, at game one and uh, for the series? Oh. I'm I'm torn. I'm I'm really torn. <laughs> this is and a hard one. 
That's it really said. depends on man. Is Anthony Davis gonna go out there and get a bucket? Like, I would like to think that on the road in Golden State, after having you know the long rest that you did, Anthony Davis is gonna come out and be Anthony Davis and be super duper aggressive against this Golden State team, where they were able to get a win in Golden State against you know Steph Curry, Steph Curry and the Warriors later on in the season. So, I'm. I think I'm going with with the Lakers and the points as well. Yeah. Because I think Anthony Davis does step up to that. And, you know, we just saw everybody sitting there thinking and looking about how good Kevon Looney looked in that last series. This He's got his hands full with AD, Jared Vanderbilt, LeBron. Like, there's going to be a lot of bodies down there uh, for rebounds, and he's going to have his hands full. And so... I'm gonna trust AD this game and just say that he's go he goes out there and tries to be the most dominant person this entire series as he should be. Yeah, I'm gonna take Lakers plus four and a half. I I feel like this could come down uh, to a final shot, final last couple of possessions, and the extra rest I think is huge for the Lakers. Uh, and and I just don't you know coming off that that just Steph had to do everything and Clay wasn't shooting well. He really just had to do everything himself. I I don't know, and he he had what thirty eight attempts. I think that was a career record. That to me is just not sustainable. I think they almost need game one. They're gonna take their foot off the gas a little bit at some point. So I I think this is a this is a decent opportunity for the Lakers to uh, steal a game, maybe even maybe even win outright. So I'm definitely taking the four and a half, Kramer. Uh, you have to steal one, right? That's yeah. the storyline. If they're if they're if the Lakers are gonna advance, I mean. I I think we've used the Warriors enough this season. It's time to discard <laughs> them. And what better way? Yeah, so you have to steal one and then the Warriors are trash on the road, right? So then it becomes easy. They just lose, they they fall in line and then the series it goes long, but they they don't win a, well, a road What's that? They they've still what are we 18 straight series something like that where they've stolen a game on the road. So Yeah, no, his it's weird cuz historically they've been really good the Warriors in the playoffs on the road and you yep. know, you remember Clay Thompson, some of his best games, that Clay game I'm pretty sure was on the road. Some of some of uh you know, uh, Steph's best games have been on the road, but this team in particular hasn't been good on the road in the regular season. Uh, maybe they were on cruise control the entire time. It is a Tuesday. Are they? It, will there be taco? Like, oh yeah. shit! Are taco we, Tuesday. Are we, we can't go. Are again. we at all? Work? Does does that happen on the road? Do you think he flies in the chef and they they do like a team thing <laughs> before the game? Just re- yeah. I mean, this is this is all narrative, but yeah, I, I'm I'll with I'm, I'll be with you guys, Lakers. And by the way, I mean, I who doesn't want to watch LeBron James continue to play basketball, right? Are you with? No. Yeah, I like I like I like watching LeBron play. Um, I, I I think at this point, and, and we're gonna see the Laker flags, by the way. So by by joining the Laker bandwagon, we if do have Lakers to win game one. I, I think this is a good parlay to put in there. Lakers game one money line mm. parlayed with uh Lakers flags appearing on oh. cars in the Los Angeles. The worst. Area. They're the most front right. it's the most front running city. If if they get out to a game one win, good look news. out. Didn't see him at the grocery store earlier today, so maybe they're not going that direction. They're they're a, they're a fun uh, team to fade. All right, now talking series, and then we'll we'll close it out with some sweet locks here. Oh man, I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go Golden. Uh, I don't know. I'll go Golden <laughs> State minus one fifty five. I don't feel great about it. I, I'm leaning Lakers because of the plus odds, and I do think there's a chance they steal one, but. Come and the NBA it. is complete. Like if it's, it's going to come down to WWE, it's, if it's going to come down to a, a game seven, I think having the home court advantage ultimately could be the difference for this golden state team. I expect it to be a really good series. That being said, I'll, I'll take the minus one and a half the rest uh, matters in this game. So I, yeah, but game one, I'm going Lakers and uh, I don't have the price in front of me, but there certainly is, you know, them. What are you like? What are you looking for? I got my Rolodex. Open. Golden uh, go, uh, Lakers to win g- game one, Golden State to win the series. Similar to what we were doing for the uh, Lakers Kings, mm-hmm. I feel like that could be a, a fun plus money bet. But I'll go Golden State for the series. Terrell, kick it over to you. What are you doing for the series here? <laughs> Terrell, 
Terrell with the dramatic pauses. Very this is a, who was know, the guy? Man. Who it's, was it's, the... This is a really tough series. It was it was a really tough series. I was kind of hoping. Uh, oh, I like that. He he was. I still haven't come. I still haven't. I haven't even finished my whole handicap of the series. So, so right now, where oh. I'm at, I kind of feel like this is a a great spot for the Lakers to expose the weaknesses of Golden Ooh. State, which is on the defensive side of the ball. All right. I mean, if Anthony Davis, and so yeah, I'm going with the Lakers. I'm, I'm going to take the Lakers. If Davis dominates in the paint, uh, like he, you know, he had some great rebounding games in that, in that first series. If that continues, I, I think, I think golden state could be in trouble, but ultimately I think the, that fourth home game is going to be the difference in the series. I don't love the minus one fifty five, but I ultimately Jordan Poole's got to wake up. Yeah, if Jordan Poole doesn't wake up this series. They're getting I don't, nothing from him. And Clay too. Clay has be been. Close. Yeah, Clay was kind of a no show. Uh, this Moonoff. isn't their year. <laughs> Moonoff, how say you? Yeah, I'm 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 leaning towards the Lakers, and I probably will Ooh. bet the Lakers in this series. I think it for me it comes down to the depth of the Lakers. I mean, I think it's not talked about enough with. Austin Reeves with Rui Achimura. You have Dennis Schroeder coming off of the bench. I think their That's bench true. is better than the Golden State Warriors. And like Terrell said, if Jordan Poole doesn't wake up, this might be a Lakers baby in five or six series. So <laughs> I think Ooh. that again, this is going to be a complete different series. What the Warriors saw in uh round one against the Kings. Um, I think Kamal Looney can give fits to Anthony Davis. But for the Lakers, it's been a different guy that stepped had stepped up in round one for them. And I think that's gonna carry over in this series against the Lakers. Who's sorry, Draymond the fighters this series? <laughs> like who so, who's the instigate? Lakers plus one thirty. I know I don't I don't see a price either for Lakers win game win win uh, and win the series, but uh series price right now is at plus one thirty. I'll take the Lakers to win this series in advance of the Western Conference Finals. We didn't talk about it, but I don't I don't know if you saw what Dylan Brooks was wearing to the game. Hopefully Draymond doesn't dress like that <laughs> trying to shut down LeBron. Uh, yeah, uh, the I, modern the modern a, garb by the uh, athlete is confusing. Well, all the time. if you cue the X Files music Ooh. really quick, I was going to mention about that because too. Draymond very much could be on the outside looking in of the rest of the Warriors dynasty and find himself playing with LeBron James next year. So he's giving him, oh. a, oh. him a bone and say, "Here you go, King." Here's another chance for you to get a ring. Uh, come on, lead Ooh, off with that now, next time. now this is the lead, NBA. Lead this off next time. So we're saying Here, La- Draymond already sent a tweet out as well. Oh my god! All right, that's uh, like his bro. That's his. That's his guy. Like if you heard Draymond talk about LeBron, like <laughs> you, you think LeBron put well, him down on him? Like <laughs> Drew, he's trying I mean, to get podcast downloads. The like, guy's a smart guy. He, he understands doing stuff with LeBron is gonna <laughs> increase his brand value. Increase the reach. Get some retweets. <laughs> hey, come on the pod, man. I'll go in your pod. <laughs> uh, I'll. I. I almost switch. I almost pulled a Benedict. I'm gonna stay tough at Golden State minus one fifty five. Kramer, how say you? Oh. You're going. You're a Laker guy. Oh, this is excellent. We, you know, I love LeBron. Yeah, now, you would. We got to go to a Laker game. Get uh, get Jack Nicholson some shady race. I mean, ba- based on what I what I've seen recently, he needs a new pair. Uh, <laughs> Lakers in five. I thought I heard Moonoff say that's that seems like maybe we sprinkle that. But that, we that also price take- isn't even that. Uh, well, it's plus four seventy five. Lakers win four one. Actually, wouldn't it be Lakers in six? So li- li- Lakers and six ah, is, four, is to four to one. Fucking, I don't know. I, I'm just I I as, Lakers sweep. As soon as we see a price of uh, Lakers game All one, right. Golden on. State series, I'm hopping on that. So I'm sorry, Lakers and five is actually nine to one. I'm sorry. Oh okay. I was gonna say you're, that seemed a little. Low. You're telling me we're gonna get to see LeBron James battle Kevin Durant. LeBron James. <laughs> That's if he gets it done, Kramer. All right. I, I think it's already a done deal. Time I'll, for uh time for our locks. Let's do it. Uh let's give out a game one lock, a series lock, and then a dog. The dog can be a lot of best. Any any kind of dog, either a game one money line or or obviously a heat next game two. Uh whatever you want, that's a plus money bet. I'll let Moon off uh kick things off here. All right, so for my series lock, I am gonna go 
over five and a half in the Sixers and Celtics. Fuck. I knew he was going to do that. that I wanted to go one. first. <laughs> and then for my do. game one lock, give me the Lakers plus oh. four and a half. Bold, Sean. Bold. And then my, you said any dog or it has to be like a, whatever you want. Muna. Series Laker. dog, game dog, whatever you, whatever's a plus odd bet you like. Lakers and six, four to one. Woo-hoo. Okay. This guy at the, so uh, quick, quick aside, the, was that walking the dogs of the park? And I saw some LARPers. <laughs> I, I, I really wanted to get an action shot. Does any, does the, I don't know if our audience would know what a LARPer is, but basically it's guys who live dress- action role playing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would not, I would be surprised if, if the audience didn't know there there's, we definitely got some LARPers for sure. <laughs> there's some, yeah. You know, especially if you're hardcore analytics, you might do some uh, LARPing on the side there. It's like snorking, but, uh, <laughs> making uh, homemade swords out of foil and hitting each other with them <laughs> running around. <laughs> Hey, at least they're at least they're getting off, they're getting off the screen and they're they're see you know getting some fresh air. Anyway, I was saying all of that to say that one of the one of the LARPers had a dog with massive testicles. <laughs> reminded me of Van Wilder. <laughs> you were talking about different dogs, so it reminded me of that. All dog. right, well, good good to know. <laughs> good to know you got some ball uh, dog balls on your mind. All right, uh, getting back to basketballs. Moon or Terrell? Sorry, Moon off already went. Terrell, how say you? Game one lock. Series lock, and then uh, any kind of dog you got for the folks. For game one lock, let's go with Knicks first half minus three and a half. Ooh-hoo. I like that. Three and uh, a half, you said. Yes. Okay. I need to go for, bet there right now. Yeah, me too. For my dog, let's go Kevin Durant, thirty-five plus points plus two sixty. Oh, just had that ready casually. And for my series lock, let's go with what are the Suns? What's the Suns adjusted number now? It's plus one. What do we got? Plus one forty. Uh, yeah, plus one forty. Yeah, I'll just give out Suns to win the series. Mm -hmm. Plus one forty. They're winning the series. Kramer, what do you got for the folks? Uh, well, I unfortunately uh, there was a mistake in the in the show rundown. Uh, Moonoff went first and stole my lock. <laughs> I'm also on over five and a half games for the Sixers series for the game one lock. I oh, I really like that. Uh, I'm just gonna steal the Knicks first half angle, and for my dog, I, I hear you with Suns. That's a great play. But I'll I'll see you that and I'll raise you sons in five. No, okay. what, what, what what was the price? Eleven oh, to give, one. Giving out an eleven to one dog <laughs> on the show. No big deal. All right, yeah. for my game one lock. Match that. Show. Give me the Suns plus four and a half. I I, I just there. This is an ultimate bounce back spot. Um, for my series lock, give me the Philadelphia Seventy oh, Sixers. Play the song. Sixers plus three fifty. That's a pretty juicy. Uh, I'm telling you, like everybody sits there and they talk about my Boston Celtics. The Celtics are just gonna Celtic <laughs> handicap and what you know that it's ultimately means. But it's just like, what would be the most Celtics thing to happen in this? Pl- I mean, the most Celtics thing for them to happen last year was the fact that they made it to the finals and lost. <laughs> but like losing to Doc Rivers. Oh. <laughs> like oh my gosh, the that drama is disgusting. Is that is absolutely terrible. <laughs> that the would only be the thing most that would make Celtic-y that worse outcome. is if they lost to Doc Rivers in Game Seven. That would be like the most oh, yes. ultimate disgusting. Oh, act. Yes, and I yes, wouldn't sir. even. I wouldn't even. I would pray if it made a Game Seven that they win for their own sanity at that point because I don't want to see people go crazy and I would absolutely go crazy losing a Game Seven to Doc Rivers. So you're getting me fired. Uh, I really hope I they. It. I hope they put it, pull it together. I really do. But Sean, look around the playoffs. I I just this really just clicked in my brain as we we're talking about the NBA. But all major cities. I mean, with the exception of the the, the Chicago mistake. I mean, we're just dealing with major cities. I'm st- I'm starting to get worried about my Phoenix handicap, and I'm starting to get worried. Of, well, one well, of those is, small. They're making uh, the Phoenix small city. Phoenix and Denver are about the same uh, size. Kevin compared, Grant compensates for it. Yeah. So yeah. Compared to San Parker. Francisco, Los Angeles, New York. I mean, we really got to get Boston out of there. 
Uh, all right. So yeah, Phoenix plus four and a half game one lock series lock Sixers plus three fifty. dog is uh, I'm going Suns plus one forty oh, for the series press. Really? I'm going 11 to one. <laughs> I love it. The chat. I can't even follow the argument in the chat. They're just What's going, happening. I don't know. They're going back. They've and been forth. talking about the Knicks and the heat the entire time. It's great. I love it. It's getting chippy in there. Much like There's the Tony heat Knicks. There. Yeah. We need someone. We it's need t- a Van Gundy oh. to pull one of them out. Uh, that was, that's an all time. Did you hear Moon out Him, just now? What pulling he's, a, pulling a Colby. What did he say? Just low, just subtly mentioning that people from their chat have joined our chat. Oh yes. That's why we had him on. Hey, Make sure it's you, a bringer. <laughs> make sure you subscribe to the NBA oh, Gambling wow. Podcast. Uh, Scott, Rachel, Lante, Terrell, Moonoff, they get you covered. Daily Picks Podcast. Uh, really just doing the Lord's work there over on the NBA Gambling Podcast. Check out Moonoff on Twitter at SportsNerd824. Check out Terrell. At really rel double underscore at the end there. Again, shadyrays.com, a promo code SGPN, 50% off, and sportsgamingpodcast.com slash shady for your chance to win that big cash prize for Shady May. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second the money green, and he is Ryan. At Kramer Centric is where you can follow me, Sean. Kramer, <laughs> let it ride. <laughs>